we introduced our first GPU with the revolutionary CUDA parallel computing architecture. The observation that we made was that the 3D graphics processor, which was massively parallel to start, could be evolved into something that is more general purpose. And we thought that there would be all kinds of applications where if we were to combine the multi-core CPU with a many-core parallel processor, we could speed up those applications dramatically. And we observed that these applications, although some 5% or a very small percentage of the code, 5% or so, a few percent of the lines of code, repre can represent the vast majority of the runtime. So imagine an application where 5% of the code can be parallelizable, but that little part of the code represents 99% of the runtime. Now there are many applications like this, as it turns out. And so we created this many core architecture, and the architectural name was called CUDA. There were two things that we did really, really well with CUDA. The technology invention, of course, was very important, but there were two strategic decisions that we made that I thought really made a difference in how CUDA was accepted all over the world. The first thing that we did was this, that we recognized that we don't want to replace the CPU, we just want to add to it. To add to the multi-core CPU, the mini-core architecture of the GPU. And so as a result of that, there's never any slow down. It's always speed up. The second decision we made was to ride the back of the high volume GPU business we had called GeForce. As a result of that, could have benefited from the billion dollars a year of R&D budget that goes to building GeForce GPUs, and it also rode into the marketplace on the back of a GPU, a processor that has a reach of 100 million plus PCs per year. And as a result, gave CUDA the benefit of a very high R&D budget, as well as very broad reach. Making every single GPU at NVIDIA compatible with CUDA was strategically a very challenging decision to make because of the cost incurred from incorporating CUDA in every GPU, but the benefits are surely, surely there. Now, the market, as we rolled out CUDA, embraced CUDA with great enthusiasm. We saw almost instantaneously researchers like yourself all over the world downloading the CUDA SDK onto their PCs with GeForce in it and using it to do research in a vast majority, in a vast array of fields, scientific fields, ranging from biology to finance to product design to astrophysics. The type of simulations they were doing ranging from M-body simulations to Monte Carlos, image processing to computational fluid dynamics to molecular dynamic simulations. And the results were completely terrific as we're gonna talk about during the course of this conference. What we learned is this, that the visionaries before us, the national labs, the US military, Energy Department, funding supercomputing research decades ago, put this technology, high performance computing technology in the hands of scientists who realizes that there are insights that are simply impossible using theoretical and experimental approaches to science. And it started this, what is now recognized as the third pillar of science, high performance computing. Researchers all over the world have embraced this approach to accelerating their insight into discovery. We come along with CUDA. We come along with GPU computing. And what we've done is we've made that capability much, much more accessible. We've made that capability much more affordable. We're riding really on the coattails of the visionaries before us, but all of a sudden we recognize now there's a tipping point. The tipping point has been achieved, has been reached. The world wants to have access. Scientists and researchers and engineers all over the world 
want to have access to this high performance capability, high performance computing capability for their research. And now with CUDA, it's made affordable and abundant. Now, GPU computing is not just an opportunity to accelerate insight or accelerate research. We also have to take a look at GPU computing from the perspective that this is a strategic mandate for the computer industry. In 2007, Professor Patterson and his team at Berkeley wrote a very important paper that I'm sure many of you have read. And he introduced the concept of the new conventional wisdom in, com in computing. That whereas transistors were expensive in the past, transistors are now free. Power is expensive. Whereas in the past, mathematics was expensive. ALUs and floating points were expensive. Today, load stores for memory are expensive. Math is free. And whereas in the past, we could rely on instruction level parallelism ideas using out of order execution, better compiler technology, all kinds of architectural innovations that leads to more and more instruction level parallelism, that is now diminished. He calls this power wall plus memory wall plus ILP wall the brick wall. And it's a, it's, a, it's a call to the industry to recognize that we need another approach. And in this paper, he says we desperately need an approach based on parallelism. In fact, if we were just to extrapolate, and I've done here extrapolating from the beginning of basically about the batch time, where we had the benefit of about 52% 50 per, per year of improvement in computational performance, and then all of a sudden, as we started to hit this brick wall, performance improved at about 20% per year. If I were to extrapolate that out, 10 years from now, in just 10 years from now, we would have lost 100 times the performance benefit that we have come to expect and enjoy from computer technology over the last several decades. And so parallel computing both creates an opportunity to accelerate science and discovery. On the one hand, it is also a strategic imperative for the computer industry, on the other hand, that we have to find a better approach. And I think it's within the context of the opportunity as well as the threat that CUDA has resonated with all of you. Now, before I go on and talk about CUDA's adoption uh, all over the world, I think it's great if we could just see what CUDA does. And uh, every year, uh, Tony and his team, and Tony's in charge of our content and technology group, not only do we create the processors and also the tools necessary to program the processors, we also have a large team of applied algorithm experts that are thinking, along with you, how to make best use of our GPUs, and they're working with you to get the most out of our GPUs, or in often case, to inspire the industry to use the GPUs in ways that it hadn't uh, considered before. Tony runs one of the most important teams in our company, and with that, why don't we have Tony Tomasi come up and talk to us about a couple of the demos that his team has put together. Hey, Tony. Good morning, everyone. Um, I've got three things I want to show you this morning. Um, I want to give you a taste of uh, pushing tessellation about as far as we can push it today on the current generation hardware, uh, and then move into some volumetric simulations that are really artful blends of computation and graphics.